WordPress offers you the ability to add additional users to your website for a variety of purposes. So for example, if you have a business partner who is also gonna be managing your website, you could add them. If you have a writer for your blog or even a team of writers and editors, you can add them and you can give these individual users the specific privileges that you would like them to have. So I'm gonna show you very quickly how to manage and add users to your website. So of course, we're gonna go over to the users menu and we're gonna click on all users. Once again, very familiar design here, the same table that we've seen time and time again. And you can see we've got one user on this website and it's me. Uh, so we've got my username here, my name, email address, my user role, which we'll talk about momentarily, and the number of posts that I've authored. So you can edit a user, you can view their author page on the front end of the site, which is where you'll see a list of their blog posts. And then in the bulk actions menu, you can choose to delete a user or send them a password reset link. You can also use this menu to change the user role. So let's go ahead and add a new user and see what that looks like. So you can click add new at the top of this page or you can click add new in the users menu in the sidebar. So from here, you can set a username. Let's say we're creating an account for somebody named Kevin. Then we can add his email address You can add a first name, last name, website, and then set a password for the user. I'm gonna skip last name and website for now, uh, and we will enter a password here for him. And then you can choose to send the user an email about their account so that they can log in. I'm actually gonna skip that since this is just a demonstration. And then at the bottom, you can choose the user role. So this is important. This determines what editing privileges the user has on your website. And this is all encompassing. So a subscriber is basically just someone who can view your content and log in and manage their profile. So a lot of times this is what community websites will use and you know membership sites, maybe e-commerce stores for customers. This is a very basic user role. It just gives them an account it doesn't give them any editing privileges. The next role up the list here is contributor. This role provides limited capabilities for content creation. So contributors can create and edit their own posts, but they can't publish their own posts and they can't upload media. So a contributor can write a blog post, they can submit it to you for review, but they cannot edit any previously published content and they can't publish posts themselves. Users with the author role can write, edit, and publish their own posts, but they can't edit others' posts and they can't make any administrative changes to your site. So an author basically has unrestricted publishing rights. So they can write blog posts, they can publish them immediately to the website without your approval, but they can only manage their own posts. Moving one step up, editors can manage all of the posts and pages on your site, including those written by others. So editors will often oversee the work of authors and contributors. While editors do have a high level of access, they cannot manage your global site settings, your plugins, your themes, or your users. They can only manage the content on your website, the posts and pages. And of course, moving up to the top level role, the administrator role, this is essentially what you are. This is the site owner, uh, although you can have multiple administrators. Um, it's the most powerful user role, and it's what you're assigned when you create a new website. Administrators have full control and can manage all aspects of your WordPress site. So I would encourage you to be very selective about who you give the administrator role. Generally, it should be reserved for the site owner, 
But if you have, again, like a business partner or something like that, somebody who is equally in control of the website, you can give them that role. So for this example, let's say we want Kevin to be a contributor. We want him to be able to create his own content, submit it for review, but not be able to publish it without approval. And we also don't want him to be able to edit other people's content uh, or anything like that. So Kevin will be a contributor and we'll go ahead and hit add new user. Now we're back on the user's screen and you can see Kevin has been added to this table. And if we click on Kevin's username, you'll see that we have a very similar page to what we saw earlier editing our own profile. So you can actually make all of these profile changes for other users on your site in the exact same way that you would make them for your own profile. So that is a brief introduction to managing users on your WordPress site.